Hello, my name is Brian Freed and I'd like to thank you for the opportunity of allowing me to share my experiences as being an inventor with you. I have to say that growing up, I always used to take a look and see how things worked, how people actually used things, and I definitely saw that there was room for improvement. I didn't know what to do back then. But as I continued to grow up into my adulthood life, I got married, I have a wife named Lisa, I have a daughter named Alana, and I have two dogs that I have to say, between all of them, have been a pretty big inspiration on a lot of products that I've come up with. Some have been good and some haven't been good, but that's the life of the inventor. You have to go through and find out what works and what doesn't and keep moving forward. So anyway, um, as I mentioned before, I have a daughter named Alana, and we started to go to these amusement parks and go to these shows, Elmo, Elmo's World and Disney on Ice and go to Sesame Place in Pennsylvania. And what, what would happen is I see people buying these character balloons, I did it myself, buy the character balloon with Elmo on it and the uh, parent would take the ribbon from the balloon and tie it around the kid's wrist and it would be too tight, that's me, I did that, cut off my daughter's circulation or it was too loose and the balloon was flying away. And uh, when we went to the amusement parks, the kid would want uh, a big bird balloon and the parent would do the same thing, tie it around the wrist or tie it around the stroller. Everything, uh, if it was too loose, it would fly away or in between the rides, they want to put it on, take it off, on, off. So I said, you know what? There's got to be a better way. I came up with this idea. It's my first idea. It's called the balloon band. And now when a parent goes to the amusement park or one of those uh, events, you take it and you put the wristband around the kid's wrist. It's a nylon wristband with a metal D-ring and it has a Velcro on the bottom, otherwise known as lock and loop. You learn these things when you become an inventor. And uh, now you take the ribbon and you tie it around the D-ring and anytime the kid wants to take it on and off, take it right on and off. If the parent wants to put it on the stroller, if uh, the parent wants to put it on a belt buckle, whatever it is. And uh, now the kid can take it on and off as they please. You have Elmo or Big Bird, whoever you want, on the, uh, on the band promoting uh, the amusement park on here. Applebee's, TGI Fridays, whatever. Even uh, the people that give balloons out at those restaurants. And uh, if the child lets go of the balloon, and the, uh, and the wristband. It's also a weight, so the balloon doesn't fly away. So I have to say that doing this first invention taught me a lot. Patenting, uh, sewing manufacturers, such a simple product, right? Sewing manufacturers, uh, different pieces that you want to put together with it, uh, designing it, uh, distribution, manufacturing with distribution, otherwise known as licensing, all these different things you start to learn. And I started to go to a local inventors club and people saw that I had a product out there and I started to make some traction out there. And uh, people wanted to know what I was doing and I wanted to know what they were doing. It was a great networking opportunity. But I started to realize that there were things that were going on in that group that I wanted to do differently. So what I did was I took a model actually from Wisconsin that were doing a tremendous job helping inventors and I brought it to my local uh, county office here in Suffolk County and uh, I presented the idea. I said one of the biggest factors for inventors is that they're, they're so shy. They don't want to tell anybody their idea. The only challenge with that is that if they don't tell anybody or they don't bring anybody to help them with their idea at any stage, uh, patent attorneys, manufacturers, uh, engineers, then most likely they're not going to be able to do it alone. Uh, so that was one of the biggest fears to overcome was the being uh, uh, comfortable and confident that people weren't going to steal their ideas. So that's why I went to the county office. They loved it. Uh, and uh, at this point, it's been a, a year and a half, two years that I started that group. There's been over 600 members that have now uh, joined and, and have come through the doors of the Suffolk County Inventors and Entrepreneurs Club. Uh, as I uh, continued to facilitate that group, I started to go to local um, libraries and I started a, a seminar called An Inventor's Adventure. Went to middle schools, colleges, uh, small business administration, SBDC, different government uh, support agencies. And uh, I realized that there were so many people out there that had an idea and just didn't know what to do next. So I came up with uh, this concept. I said, you know what, I want to help as many people as I can 
But unfortunately, my social life and my personal life were taking a beating, helping people out, which I didn't mind at all, but it started to weigh down. So I said, you know what, I'm going to spend eight months, and well, I didn't know it was going to take eight months. Uh, it's called a book, I, I authored this book called You and Your Big Ideas, and uh, it has nothing to do with me in there, except maybe just a little bit of uh, some information on me back in the back, but it's about you and your big ideas. It's all about you. And the way I continue to help people with this book is that an inventor buys it, any proceeds that I make from it go directly to charity. So the inventor gets help in here, gets to save tons of different, uh, tons of money, gets uh, plenty of different ideas and resources in here, and at the same time it continues to help people in need. So I'm happy to have this book out there, You and Your Big Ideas. It's been uh, a great support uh, book for a lot of inventors out there. And I said, between the uh, book and uh, between the monthly meetings for the Inventors Club, I said that I, I started to realize that people would come to these meetings and they wouldn't talk and then they continue to come and they really wouldn't do anything with their idea and that was frustrating to me. I wanted, I wanted to try to help as many people out as possible and not have to wait one month between meetings to actually get some solid information. So I said I wanted to come up with this concept to have a, a radio show. So I started this radio show in November of 2009. It's called Got Invention Radio, and I'm showing you an article that was actually in Inventors Digest magazine, which is the largest publication for inventors, from April 2010 this year. And uh, I partnered up with Inventors Digest magazine, and I have to say that there's been over 4,000 plus listeners each month, and they continue to grow. That's unique listeners. And it's been attracting some tremendous resources for inventors. It's been attracting tremendous guests, uh, high profile. And uh, it's just a tremendous asset, in my opinion, and a, a great resource for inventors out there to, to uh, get some valuable information. And that's what I'm about. I'm about being an inventor advocate, helping, different, uh, helping inventors with their ideas, and, and helping them bring their ideas to the next level. I have a couple of uh, products that I invented that have started to make traction in the market and I just want to share one with you real quick this one is fun so remember I told you when I got married I started to see my wife in action in the kitchen and I started to see that there was a lot of things in my refrigerator going bad and it was because of these plastic tabs that would either break off or you lose them and the bag would be left open in the in the uh, refrigerator and then I started to see older people with the twist ties having trouble with them. Plus, I have trouble with them too, but opening and closing them. So I said, there's got to be a better way. People put rubber bands on bags because they can't find their tabs or whatever. So I, I said, there's got to be a better way. So I came up with this thing called the pull tie. And it's, a, it's a made out of PVC. And basically what you do is you take a plastic bag and you slip it right through. And you pull it up slide it down the bag and then you push the button in and you pull it up and it seals it tight. So it's dishwasher safe, it's freezer safe, it's easy dexterity use, right? And uh, it just seals it tight. So now I'm happy. My bread is not uh, stale. I use it on cereal bags, pretzels, plastic, chip clip, instead of the chip clip out there. This is the replacement. So I'm happy to say that I've had uh, some pretty good success out there with this. And there's many more that, uh, that are in the, in the pipeline. I understand licensing, manufacturing at all stages. And uh, I have to say that uh, just the whole inventor experience has been fantastic. You get to meet so many different people out there and share your experiences with each other. And the most important thing is networking and get, getting the message out. And hopefully this show will be uh, a big part of that. And I'm happy, hopefully, to be a part of it as well. Thank you for the opportunity. Have a great day.